infinity. The reason we replace this h plus one with infinity is we we can directly use the formula for an infinite arithmetic or geometric progression, and that formula will give you a small number. Okay, some small integer, and this value is n plus one. So basically, the total time that build heap takes is less than or equal to n plus one times some constant c. And this means the total time is order n. So build heap takes order n. And in fact, you can see that we are building this heap right in, right within the array itself, right? Because all the all the heapification steps are going to take place within this array. So we are given this input array for uh, on which we want to build a heap, and we can actually work in place to build a heap from it. And once we build a heap from it, we can do a sequence of n extract max operations to sort this array. Now somebody asked about, uh, I mean, I mentioned a few minutes ago that we can do some optimizations for the heap sort algorithm. So assume that you have this array, which is a heap now. We have executed the build heap procedure on this array. We have built the heap in order n time. Now when we do that extract max operation, What we can do is, since we'll be pushing this boundary to the left, we can take the maximum element we are removing and place it at the end of this array itself. Right? As this boundary will keep shifting to the left when we remove elements from here, we can take those maximum elements and keep putting them back at the other end of the same array. So now you can see why heap sort works in place because you can take the original array that you are given to sort. Where is that? Right here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So you can take that original array you are given at the beginning. You can run heapification on it. Build heap actually, which uses heapification. Can transform it into, I mean, you can the same array A now becomes a heap, and then you can do an extract max operation n times on it and store the elements that you're extracting on the other end. And as a result, what you'll have is at the end, you'll have a sorted array in the same location. Somebody actually had asked at the beginning why we are using a max heap instead of a min heap. One of the reasons, I mean, it's not a reason exactly, but one one of the nice things about uh, using a max heap is that once we extract the maximum element, we know that in the final sorted array, the maximum element will appear at the very end. So we can just directly put it there because we know that that is empty space as far as the heap is concerned. Since as we are deleting elements from the front here of the heap, because the very first element is the root element, so we'll be only deleting from here. We can take that maximum element and push it back here. The boundary of the heap itself will be somewhere to the left of this. So this is not a part of the heap itself, but we are reusing that space in the array. So I think uh, that pretty much finishes with what I wanted to discuss. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. What we have discussed uh, is we have discussed priority queues. We have discussed the heap data structure. We saw how to do how to execute the insert operation on it. We saw how to execute the remove max operation on it. Both of them ran in order log n time. And then we also saw how to build a heap in linear time. And we saw how to use all of these operations, building a heap, uh, building a heap and then removing all the elements one by one in order to sort a given array. So we saw how heap sort can exploit a combination of these operations to sort a given input array in increasing order in place without using any extra space. So 
feel free to ask questions now. Uh, okay, um, the right side inequality actually shows you that not only are the number of elements, not only is it order of log n, it's actually theta of log n, the, uh, the height of the tree. If you've done asymptotic complexity, you know that you know theta is a combination of both big O as well as big omega. So log n is not just an upper bound, but it's also uh, a lower bound. So it's a tight sandwich. I didn't mention this because you know it's. Uh, so have you done asymptotic analysis? The chapter on asymptotic analysis from uh, your textbook. Yeah, uh, so what all have you, uh, like if you're familiar with asymptotic analysis, then this may make more sense, what I just said. Because that's supposed to be a chapter that is that needs to be covered before you come to heat sort. Before actually you uh, look at divide and, even before you look at divide and conquer and heat sort and all that. 